today I'm going to look at the KNN High Flow air filter for the Triumph T120, which is a fairly new introduction to the KNN range. Now, today is my birthday. By the time this video is published, it will actually be the day after my birthday. But today is my birthday, so I'm going to indulge myself by playing back some of my favourite footage from the last 10 months, whilst I tell you a little bit of a story about how KNN filters actually came to be. Now, on the second half of the video, I am going to show you how to actually fit these new filters to the Triumph T120. So if you want to fast forward straight to that, that's up to you. Now when I was a lad and I first started biking, you weren't considered a proper biker unless you had KN filters fitted on your bike. And whilst I was researching this video, I came across an interesting little story about how KN filters came to be. Now, I'm not entirely sure how much of it is founded on facts, but it is an interesting little story. So I'm going to tell you anyway because it's my birthday. Now, your pleated paper filters haven't changed much in the last 50 or 60 years, and they are, in actual fact, an exercise in diminishing returns. They are pretty restrictive when they're new, but obviously as they go through the normal cycle of the life and collect that dirt, eventually the clog up completely, the airflow through them diminishes more and more throughout the life. Now there were two American guys back in the late 1960s whose passion for desert racing brought about a great dissatisfaction with this type of filter. They usually found that the bike was seriously down on power by the end of the race and in some cases the filter became so clogged they were even unable to complete the race. So they created the first oil impregnated cotton fibre air filters. They were designed for racing so they were designed to be less restrictive and they were designed as a compromise in that they would allow the smaller particles of dirt through but they would stop the larger more damaging particles of dirt getting through. So although the ultimate result would be engine damage, it would be much slower and much less serious than running without a filter. Now these filters actually worked better than they expected. And after multiple races, inspections of the engines showed that actually no dirt at all was getting through. The filters were filtering all of the debris out. Now they couldn't understand how this could be, so eventually these filters were analysed. So get ready, here comes the science bit. The filters were constructed from multiple layers of oil impregnated cotton gauze and each and every cotton strand in that gauze was made up of cotton fibres. Now these cotton fibres stick out from the cotton strands but what you have to remember that is that this is on a microscopic level. Now when air flows through the filter box on your bike it isn't one continuous steady flow. The engine valves are opening and closing thousands of times a minute while the engine's running. The faster it runs the faster they open and close and this causes what I think is known as induction pulsing. Now this induction pulse interacted with these cotton fibres so it excited them to the point where they were constantly moving around into and across what the makers thought were open spaces and whereas the cotton strands were catching the larger particles these microscopic oil impregnated fibers were also catching the tiny particles so nothing was getting through but a free open flow of air was still being made available to the engine now to this day KNN filters although they've been improved a lot since the 1960s still work on this principle and so far nothing has been found that will beat it. Now all KNN air filters come with a very generous 1 million mile warranty and KNN guarantee that fitting one of these to your new T120 or to any other vehicle for that matter will not invalidate your manufacturer's warranty. And KNN claim that these are designed to increase horsepower and acceleration. Now this is a washable and reusable performance filter and KNN recommend that it should be cleaned round about every 50,000 miles. The part number for the Triumph T120 air filter is TB9016 and I believe that this part also relates to the Street Twin, the Street Cup and the Street Scrambler. However the Bobber, the Thruxton the Thruxton R and the new T100 use different filters and as yet KNN do not offer a filter option for them. 
Now this is a cassette type filter that fits into a tray that slides out of your air filter box. Included with your filter should be a tube of filter sealing grease and this should be used to ensure proper sealing in the case of deformed or imperfect air filter boxes that may be fitted to some bikes. Now I'm just going to say from the beginning I could not find any information on fitting an air filter to the Triumph T120. I'm presuming that the other models that I've mentioned that this filter is suitable for should be a very similar procedure but I don't have access to those bikes so I can't guarantee it. Basically, if what you see in this video matches up with what you see on your bike, you should be good to go. Now, as I've said, I could not find any information on how to fit this filter to my bike. In fact, I didn't even know where the entry point to the filter box was. It wasn't behind the side panels as it was on the previous Hinkley's. There was no access underneath the seat. And I actually discovered by trial and error that entrance into the air box is behind the bike's engine cylinders. But in order to get to it, there are one or two little things that have to be removed to get access. Access. I will also say that after I've fitted this I did identify that it may be advantageous to remove that false carburetor throttle body cover from the left hand side of the bike just to give yourself a little bit more room with your hand and your tools to make the installation easier. As I say, I didn't really identify this until after I'd fitted it. Now first of all, remove both side panels and put them somewhere safe. Then take off both of the false intake covers. It's just one single screw at the top and then it hooks on at the bottom. And this just serves to open things up a little bit so you can actually see what you're doing. Once you've got those off on both sides, have a look at that false carburetor throttle body cover and just decide whether or not you need to take that off because now is the best time to do it. Once you've done this, you should now have a better view of the access plate that takes you into the air filter box. But before you can start undoing it, you need to remove the engine breather pipe. And this is a clip at the bottom of the pipe and a clip at the top. You might just be able to do this with your fingers, it's one of those squeezed together type clips at top and bottom, but I did find them to be quite awkward so I used a pair of pliers for the job. Just be careful not to chew them up while you're doing it. Now once you've got that out of the way, at the top there is a bracket that holds the top of the engine breather assembly in place. This is just a single screw, it's a TX15. Unscrew that all the way, put the screw somewhere safe and just leave the bracket where it is, it will just hang there. If you don't do this, you'll struggle to actually get the access plate to your air filter box off. Once that's done, a TX15 will unscrew all four of the access plate cover screws. When you've done that, you should find that the access plate will just come off. Store the cover somewhere safely while you're actually changing the filter. The last thing you want to do is put this on the floor, stand on it and scratch the sealing surface because you don't want it sucking air in between the inspection plate and the body of the air filter box. And once this is done, it's simply time to slide the old filter out and prepare to put the new filter in. Now the two filters both look very different. The original Triumph filter is very opaque. You can barely see any light through it. And this is what causes the restriction on your air intake. By contrast, the k &N filter gives the impression of being very open. You can see daylight through it all the way along, but rest assured it's still giving you optimum protection for your engine, along with a slight power boost. Now, I dry fitted this filter a couple of times just to see if there are any areas where sealing might be a problem. Because it slides in I decided not to put any grease on the top edge of the filter. The reason being that this grease will be smeared on the inside of the filter box and there's a chance of that being sucked into the intake system and then causing problems with the fuel injection. The only area that I could see that might be a problem is where it fits into the cassette. So I just put a thin bead of sealing grease all around the underside edge of the filter where it mates into the cassette. Once you've done this, it's time to put it back 
into the airbox. Now that's basically all there is to it. Putting everything together is the exact reverse of taking it all apart. Be careful when you're putting those TX15 screws back into the airbox housing. They are essentially self-tapping screws going into plastic. If you over tighten them, you could pull them through. And I would imagine that a new airbox for a Triumph T120 is gonna be very expensive. Just feel your way in with them, be careful, and you shouldn't have any problems. Once you've got it all back together, what I did as a precaution is I started the engine up and just allowed it to run for a few minutes. This allows the engine management system to get used to the extra air that's been allowed through into the engine and adjust everything accordingly. Now I think the regular retail price for this filter through KNN is around £67-68. But obviously demand at the moment is low because the T120 is very new and there'll be very few people having to change the filters as yet. So at the moment, KNN are selling it for about £52, which I think is a good saving over the recommended retail price. Now might be the time to get your hands on one. When I ordered it, I also ordered the recharge and cleaning kit. This is basically just two cans. One is a cleaner so that when you reach your 50,000 miles, you use the cleaner to clean the filter, you rinse it off with water, allow your filter to dry, and then recoat it with the second can, which is the KNN filter oil now I think that was just under 17 pounds and I have to admit I did jump the gun a bit because I have 50,000 miles to do before this is gonna need doing but I reckon there's enough in the kit to do your filter two maybe three times now as for performance it's very difficult to gauge what boost in performance this filter will provide for you I have heard reports that it will boost performance by two or three percent but I really couldn't say for certain what I will say is that I noticed instantly that the engine is much more willing to rev power pickup is much cleaner and less jolty than it was before and there's a definite improvement in acceleration now at the end of the day this is probably the last filter you're ever going to have to buy for this bike even if you keep this bike until the day you die i do personally think it's a worthwhile investment i don't know what the triumph standard filters cost but i would hazard a guess that they're somewhere between 10 and 20 pounds each taking into account the additional performance that this filter allows and possible fuel savings and the savings over the cost of having to buy new filters every 20,000 miles. In the long run, this filter does make sense and I'm certainly glad that I got it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If anybody has any questions, anything that I've not made clear in this video, please ask that question in the comments section. I'll be all too happy to answer them. I'd like to thank you all for watching. I'd also like to thank everybody who's come onto Facebook and wished me happy birthday today. I really do appreciate it and of course I'll see you next week